Okay, here, I'm going to make this little video on what I like and what I dislike about the master. And uh, it's in no order, no nothing. I'm just looking at it and talking about what I've done and my experience with it so far. So I guess number one, I'm looking at it from here, will be uh, there's little bushings in here. You can kind of see... Uh, my fingernails on the bushing. I added these washers on here. The reason why I added the washers was because all the bushings were half out and they weren't, um, there's too much play in that pin and the head of this uh, bolt is not really big enough to push on the bushings like it should. So it was all sloppy and falling apart. So that really tightened it up and that tightened up all of them except for the one, the top pin that goes into the frame, which um, you can't adjust the spacing. Uh, you can't really see in there that well, but uh, anyway, that bushing's out a little bit, but it's it's the least of all of them. So that's number one. Um, I don't know how to say that. Poorly, uh, everything about the master a little bit about my history is I, I, I used to be a heavy duty mechanic and I worked for, for Caterpillar dealership. So I have some experience and pretty much everything I see on this is basically unacceptable. And what I know, it's just slapped together, but saying that it's a big improvement over previous, the Goat or Gotway wheels, in my opinion. So anyway, um, so that's the, one of the things I did pretty important one, I think. Um, the other thing I did was the Grizzla pads and side fairing because uh, obviously I already broke the, the, the tail light, which everyone knows that's a weak point. And then they don't even have them in stock. So anyway, that sucks. But the fact that uh, this really made a big difference, the Grizzla pads on bumper front and rear bumper. And the, the, this is the, 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 the uh, plate here is the is the most the best part and then there's these little um spacers because you use the the bolt holes that hold the top of the battery on to hold the um the plate on but these little 3d printed spacers are the key and they fit nice and tight like they're perfect around the battery there so that's really good and it just really locks everything and it really makes everything feel really stable the thing i re i learned was that it's so such a perfect fit in there I was gonna add Velcro all the way up to the top, but it was too thick then, so I removed it and just had Velcro down here. And you can see even there, it's still tight enough that it doesn't sit fully flat on the battery. Um, battery case. Uh, the other thing that's maybe my biggest gripe is, I know the the, the Begold, um, um RSs when they first came out, they, the, the way the, the, the black cover here was designed that the water would stay in around the bearing if any water got in and then it would seep in the bearing. And then they removed some of that cover, cover so I guess that wouldn't happen. But now rocks go in here and there's no protection. So I've uh, bent my dust seal from a rock getting in there and uh, ground all up the cover and everything, which is terrible. And uh, so... Yeah, that really sucks about it. That's maybe my biggest gripe because once that dust seal is bent or misshapen, then it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I took it apart and popped out the dust seal and straightened it the best I could, but it's still not perfect and it never will be because it's been bent, right? So anyway, that's my biggest gripe. And the good thing about this is this kickstand, I've been trying different things. And what I did was I, uh, okay, the other gripe I have is these battery covers are, are flimsy at best. And any rocks or sticks that get in there, and with my other wheels, that happens all the time when you're riding off-road. Pushes on the battery is just hard on everything and just stupid as far as I'm concerned. Should be a plate or something in there to protect the batteries. But So what I did is I got some EVA foam, the same foam I used for the pads. And I just wrapped it around the wheel and zip-tied it in there. So it's my rock ejector. So all the rocks and sticks get pushed out before it hits the battery. And when I first put it on, I just press it up against the wheel. And it rubs and screams, but because it's just foam, it wears in quick. Um, the negative is that this moves up and down independently of the wheel. It moves with the rest of the machine, so it's never very... It doesn't fit tight like it, like it would if it moved with the wheel. So anyway, but it's better than nothing. 
and it's just a sacrificial part that helps a lot. I mean, the odd rock still gets through. Oh, and I threw on this fender just because the other one is falling, will fall off all the time and everything. I just Velcroed it on. Um, what else did I do? Uh, I run it at like 300 PSI pressure. Oh, the biggest, sorry, the next biggest thing is, as I did is the suspension is good, no doubt. Like, the suspension period is good. This suspension is still needs a lot of work. The dampening sucks. There's no... I might as well not even have a rebound adjustment. So it, every time you go over a bump um, and the suspension's compressed, like going downhill, and then it extends really hard. It goes bang, bang, bang. And all I have is these little O-rings inside. So what I did was, you can see it right there. I, I cut a, a big chunk of rubber um, with a hole saw. So I made it like a great big bushing. Then I drilled holes in the sides to soften it a little bit, to give it more progressive compression. And then I put the O-ring between that and the uh, part of the suspension that hits on it. So now I lost maybe, I don't know, 10 millimeters or 15 millimeters of suspension travel, like free travel. But now when I bought on the suspension, it's, I don't even know that I do. It's kind of a really progressive stop. It really dampens it when it, fully extends it still slams but just a fraction of what it did before so you still get the thud 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 but it's not the bang bang so it's a, a lot better um it's hard to see i should just do a video about it um yeah so right there is the bushing you can see and there you can see the holes i've drilled in it and then in between the and then that little o-ring that comes with it is in between that and the slider part just so it doesn't slam is on the rubber as hard it's more of a, a, a progressive um stopping and that makes that makes the biggest difference riding it i feel i can just rip over bumps and stuff and when it does bottom i don't know it or bottom softly and it's way less noisy when it tops out when the suspension fully extends um i like the pedals oh i've learned over time for me um, so I don't know if everyone does this, but I, I made my own pads. Um, and the reason I did was it's just cheaper and I wanted to give them even more protection. So now I have the grizzly pads for front and back. And then when it falls on the side, I have these, because like I said, the batteries seem flimsy and, and all that impact on batteries and stuff. It just seems stupid to me. So, um, the way I do it is anytime you're riding off road and you're really getting bounced around, um, you move forwards and backwards. So I, I make it so that my ankle won't quite fit in between here. So that my, my ankle never really touches there, but it's wedged between these two points. It takes a little bit of time to find that perfect distance. But once you do, your feet don't move forwards or backwards very much. And when they do jump around, they kind of recenter themselves. So that's been my little trick that's made a big difference. And uh, I, just use a yo I just used a yoga block. And I uh, made it two inches high. And uh, I guess this is the I think four inches wide across here. Whoops. I made it two inches here, four inches wide across here. So two yoga blocks. I just kind of cut the center out of them and then put Velcro on them. And then they're just another thing that I'll replace once they get chipped, chunked out and banged up. But they've already protected a lot on some impacts. And as you can see, it protects all the way around like the front when it hits the side everything's protected now um that i think is a really huge advantage with the the master is every wheel should just be surrounded in, in foam some, some high density foam that just makes sense because they do fall no matter how good of a rider you are you're gonna fall it's not like a motorcycle or something especially if you're riding off-road maybe if you don't ride off-road once you're a good enough rider you won't but uh, yeah, so the bushing, though, you can see it again from here. Um, there, you can see that chunk of rubber with the holes in the side. Right there. So that's my, my that's, I think it's a half inch wide. So I actually lost an inch of travel, sort of. But it's totally worth it to not have the slamming. Because the slamming, I mean, I was thinking is the sure the suspension is good for less banging for all the electrical components but 
is it better when it's like slams like it does all the time so i just i couldn't ride it knowing that it's banging so hard all the time yeah so i still think it's it's like thrown together and nothing fits quite right but it's a big improvement over other wheels um oh the other good thing about it is now that i've taken it apart a few times you could really rip this wheel apart in in like less than an hour even taking your time you could have it in pieces everything apart in no time at all and i find myself really tinkering with it way more than all the other wheels i have because it's um suspension and there's just so many more moving parts and you're just checking things and tinkering and you go easily three times as fast on trails with it so it just needs a lot more love i think when you're beating on it so yeah that's it that's my spiel i might do a, i have some pictures or uh maybe some short videos of how i did the the bushings or just what they look like yeah sometimes my own oh, then you know i don't know if you have any experience with the goads but sometimes the lights don't work sometimes this or that doesn't work this this screen is no exception sometimes it doesn't come on oh the other thing about this wheel 21 degrees the highest i've gotten it is 50 degrees climbing really steep hills that would overheat all my other wheels normal riding hard trail riding i'm at like 38 40 if i'm climbing and look i'm at 21 now no other wheel rides around at 21 and when it does get hot it drops real quick so it's the coolest running wheel ever when it's cool out like 10 degrees and i'm riding outside on the road it's 18 degrees it's insane very very cool yeah that's it i think yeah and the grizzle pads are great everything just fits just right i haven't and one thing i did do is i drilled out these little holes just so i have access to the bolts just to make sure i can tight check if they're tight all the time um everything's easy to cross thread because it's just like crappy steel i guess they're just not put together very good and i mean it's just be careful whenever you take something apart and put it back together just take your time and because it's just it's all yeah everything's half-assed it seems but it's the best we've got right now so that's what it is <laughs> anyway oh and the other thing is like oh, there's so many little crappy things but i won't bore you with them overall the big goes the fastest most powerful funnest wheel i've ever ridden and i've ridden a handful of wheels yeah that's it